Throughout the length of the Tournament of Power, spanning from its very beginning all the way to its current point now, being that there is only 19 minutes remaining until it is all over, we have seen things that have left us either speechless, completely shocked, or in utter disbelief, and with its recent revelation, the Tournament of Power rules seem to be constantly changing as we make our way deeper into its very core, as we've now learned that the sacred earrings of the gods known as the Potara earrings are now legal and could be used as a means to create new warriors in the Tournament of Power, and that's a game changer. With of course this news having to be stated straight from the authorities' mouth themselves, from the Grand Priest and both Omni Kings, as we ask ourselves now as to what are the chances of us witnessing new warriors emerge similar to Kefla in the Tournament of Power. But as we continue, don't forget to go on ahead and punch that subscribe button alongside enabling all notifications by clicking that bell icon, that way you guys can be notified whenever a brand new Dragon Ball video is posted onto this channel, in connection to Dragon Ball Super news information, updates, leaks, and discussions to be up to date with all the latest in Dragon Ball, hashtag Dragon Ball Squad. Now I do want to go on ahead and welcome both Bubbles and Emish back onto the channel, as the subject of fusion in the Tournament of Power is going to be the main focus here today, and the idea that I wanted to go on ahead and present three viable options in getting your take on each situation, and of course if they would be presented as logical in the show, as I also do want to mention that this is going to be the final time that we are going to be talking about fusion in the Tournament of Power, and the only reason why we are bringing this back up one more time is based on the idea that during Dragon Ball Super Episode 115, we saw a foreshadowing of several different things including Android 35 having to consist of both 18 and 17 fusing, alongside Whis having to speak briefly about the possibility of losing more fighters if in fact you actually fuse. So Bubbles, I wanted to go on ahead and start off with you and asking you, what is your take on Android 35, Vegito, and Gokan having to make their appearance in Dragon Ball Super's Tournament of Power, and the only reason why I am bringing those specific fusions up, because number one, as a collective community, we're all already aware of who and what Vegito is in the world of Dragon Ball, as he was introduced twice in the show, the first time obviously against Buhan, and the second time against Merge Zamasu, Android 35, as presented during Dragon Ball Super Episode 115, and the idea that both of the androids would be very compatible with each other given the fact that if they were to combine bodies, they would essentially create the ultimate artificial fighter, and on top of that we have the fusion of Goku and Gohan as foreshadowed in Dragon Ball Z, when originally Goku tossed his earring in Gohan's direction in wanting to fuse with him before Vegeta had arrived on Earth, and Bubbles, I wanted to get your take on this because for me, I think first and foremost, if I had to share my opinion, I don't see Goku having to fuse with Gohan in the least based on the idea that I think Gohan would much rather do things alone than fuse with his father, given the idea that Goku also has Ultra Instinct in his disposal and he can use that to further himself in the tournament. I can also say for certain that Gohan is going to last until the finals, but I just don't see Goku having to request for the Potaras and combining his body with his son in creating the fusion that we've all been looking forward to. Is it possible? Of course it is, but also having to look at Android 35, I also feel as if Android 18 is going to be in trouble given that her ankle's injured and for the sole fact that we know that Catella is going to eliminate one primary fighter from Universe 7 and for all intents and purposes that fighter actually might end up being Android 18 so if that happens you can kiss Android 35 out the window even though it was foreshadowed and hinted that if they were to combine bodies they would essentially make almost the perfect fighter but also Vegito who seems to be the most plausible option here but given the fact that Goku and Vegeta would much rather do things alone I wanted to get your take on the three as to where you stand and essentially enough, where do you see fusion going forward in the Tournament of Power? Well, my personal opinion for the Tournament of Power is that I really don't want to see any more fusion. I kind of feel like we see enough with Kefla, and we get to get introduced to Kale and Khalifa as a new character. Right. Or Kefla, and we get to see her abilities together. And I do think that it was... It was cool to see the Kaioshins and the gods from each universe wanting to fuse their characters to see such a powerful entity that could be made from two of their characters. Right. And I think that it was interesting that they threw that in there. However, I don't think it's wise for any other characters to perform a fusion. As you said, uh, would it make sense for any of the other universes except for Universe 7 to have a fusion because of the character limits on everyone else left in the other universes and i think for android 35 to see that 
for sure it's been foreshadowed, but I don't think it'll happen until, unless if it's an absolute last result, right. uh, resort. Because of the fact that right now 18 is hurt, and I know that the fusion would would form 17 and 18 together, and that would, I guess, cure 18's injury. So in a way, it'll make her stronger, but also considering the fact that once they're defused, they are much, they're much more weak. And as we said, you lose two heads if you lose a fusion. And I think right now to Universe 7, to Beerus and Whis, that the numbers is much more important than having those kinds of the fused fighters. So I don't think that Android 35 will happen unless if it is the absolute last chance in Universe 7, which even with that, I don't think it's going to be much because we still have UI, Goku, and Vegeta going on. So I don't think Android 35 should happen. So as for Vegito, I do think that it's definitely a possibility, as he's a character that we've been familiar with since Z, and we did just recently see him in the Goku Black arc. So he is a character that is obviously a very well-known character and is a very liked character. However, we see that for Vegito to have a lot of strength and power, he did go Super Saiyan Blue Vegito, and that made him power out of his fusion very, very quickly. Yes, yes. I think, I think for Vegito, though his character would be very interesting to see in the tournament, um, and to see such a strong fighter, especially against Kefla and Jiren, I think it would be so interesting. However, it's just with how quick Vegito can power out of the fusion, I don't think it's very sensible to, to kind of waste that time and to waste that energy on the fusion. Because it, it's almost as if he's too strong for his own fusion, I would say, because me exactly. and Hamish pointed that out a long time ago and the fact that perhaps maybe the Potara earrings cannot even sustain such a power. Um, but, but you would say out of all of these concepts, he would be the most likely per se just because we saw him before? I think so for sure because he's an already established character yeah. and he already has fans and people that they already know that that character is going to be something that will keep the fans watching because that's a fusion that people have previously enjoyed. Yeah. So I feel like it's, if they're if they're adding another fusion, that's definitely a good way to ease into it because that's another fusion that has made it clear that people have enjoyed it. So Vegito definitely would bring in the viewers. And now Gokan on the other hand has been a fan-made concept that people have wanted to see since the the fusion of mortals with the Patara earrings has been introduced when Goku first threw the earring over to Gohan instead of Vegito, uh, instead of Vegeta back in the Majin Buu arc. So that's definitely something that we know has been hinted there that people do want to see. However, I don't think it's very practical for Goku to fuse with Gohan because they both have such different such different kinds of power that it almost i almost feel like it wouldn't make sense because at, with vegeta and goku since they're both pure saiyans it kind of mixes better in a way like same as when they said android 35 since they're twins the the combination would work the well compatibility right right the compatibility for me 17 18 and gohan are all characters that i enjoy on their own and i couldn't picture them as a fusion especially seeing 17 and 18 together in that light or seeing uh gohan fusing with goku so honestly i feel like if i had to pick between the three my pick would be vegeto because we already know where his power lies we already know how well of a fighter he is and how well vegeta and goku work together in the fusion so i feel like knowing all of this already their fusion makes the most sense because they know it's already a successful fusion and even as a viewer, we've seen it before, we know that that's a fusion that honestly gets shit done. So it would be interesting to see Vegito again if it absolutely came to having a fusion in Universe 7. I think it's unquestionable that Vegito definitely would be the difference maker in this tournament. However, the likelihood of Vegeta and Goku having to first of all agree in fusing would be one thing, and then the other would be presenting a situation to where they're forced to fuse, they have to fuse. Given the Zamasu story, the only reason why they were forced to work together and combine their bodies was because Zamasu was immortal, he could not die. Despite what each Super Saiyan Blue had done, it had little to 
no effect on Zamasu's body, and thus resulting in Goku having to request for the Potara earrings. But looking at it from a general point of view, I would also like to see a brand new fusion come about, that being Android 35. And what's crazy about this is these kinds of concepts were originally designed for like Dragon Ball Heroes, you know, Dragon Ball Fusions, you know, concepts of that nature, never within like the actual main show of, you know, something that correlates to Akira Toriyama's manga. And what's crazy is Android 35 is possible, I just don't think that it's the right time for that to happen, even though it would be very cool to see, as Whis pointed out, you're risking having to eliminate two fighters with the price of paying for one. And with Gokan, that's also a little iffy, but I wanted to get your take, Emish, on Fusion as to where you stand with that. Where do you stand with Android 35, Vegito, and Gokan? Do you see any other Fusion having to happen in this tournament? And essentially enough, do you think that this foreshadows a big event to occur in the future involving the Potara earrings? Well, for the Androids, first of all, I think 17. Both 17 and 18 haven't really gotten that much screen time. Uh, despite 17 kind of being hyped, or at least a lot of fans have kind of you know, loved or adored the idea of 17 making his debut or reappearance right. into the series after X amount of time, right? From the Majin Buu arc, only from the Cell arc. The last time we saw him fight was against Piccolo, which by the way was an amazing fight. So coming back into Super, people want to see what 17 can do, not what not what a fusion of 17 to 18 can do. Right. We generally know what 18 can do to some degree. We know that she can still kick some ass, and it just comes back down to what Bubble said, where there are characters where you could picture them performing well on their own. The minute you fuse them, you have to give them a lot of screen time, and you have to make them feel relevant. But if what we've seen based on fusion throughout Dragon Ball's history, if you guys want to reference Dragon Ball Z, that's fine. I think Dragon Ball Z did a little better job at showcasing what fusion does because we got to know the character at least, right? Vegito was a troll, but when he trolled you, he still did damage to you, right? Gotenks was a troll, uh, significantly less than what Vegito is capable of, but right. he kind of, we got to know him as a character. He's, he's young, he's immature, fine, no problem, but still strong, a lot of potential. But what we saw in terms of fusion from Dragon Ball Super with a Vegito back against Murzumasu, it was just absolutely ridiculous. It's, they just completely shit on the concept. I, it was kind of, you, it felt forced. It felt like it didn't belong there. He wasn't really needed, right? Especially right, right. Toyama never had any anyway. plans to introducing Vegito to begin with. I think that's exactly why it felt so forced. You know what I'm saying? So as far as like looking at Android 35, just no. I want to see what 17 can do. Can we get some more screen time between 17 and 18 first? before we start talking about, you know, some kind of legitimate fusion between the two. And then fusion being the only reason why they get any kind of screen time at all. That's not what I want to see. 17 was introduced into Dragon Ball Super, fighting or pushing Goku to go Super Saiyan Blue to some degree. And then you don't give us screen time for 17 in the Terminator Power. I don't think that sits right with me personally. So because of that, I would not want to see a fusion of 17 and 18. With that being said, Vegito. Um, I love, I like Vegito. I like Gogeta. I like fusion characters to a degree. I like what they have to bring to the table but not in a situation where it calls for times to be serious, right? right. Especially in this tournament. Kefla is a perfect example of that. I was completely disappointed. Then again, a lot of people will say, well, Emish, what were you expecting? Fusion never really gets the job done. Yeah, I've been saying that for X amount of time, but I've also been saying that maybe this is their way of redeeming themselves after what they did in the Merge Masu arc. Don't get me wrong, Kefla is trying. She's trying to put it on Goku, but she's not the same person we saw when, when she was fighting Super Saiyan God Goku, for example. Her base form, she was utilizing her speed, blitzing, really trying to get in there. But she powers up. Barely, I mean, we saw them clash in terms of fists, yeah. but she wasn't making that effort until the, the until the very end where she used the energy blast and then got behind him and kicked him in the head. Yes. So that's what I want to see more of. And then once again, in the previews, we see Keflo throwing more energy blasts against the Ultra Instinct Goku. If it's not going to work work against Super Saiyan Blue Kaoken Goku, how is it going to work against uh, Ultra Instinct Goku? You see what I'm saying? So the logic isn't necessarily there. So I don't want to see Vegito because I know that Goku is being marketed as a solo character who has to climb, who has to surpass the wall that is Jiren, and who is on a uh, journey to become the strongest mortal fighter in the multiverse. That's, there's no denying that. That's what he wants to do. Vegeta is also another character who wants to establish himself as not only being um, above Goku, Right? He said he wants to win the tournament. He alone wants to be the one to win the yes, tournament. Yes. Even when Kaba suggested that if he wins, he would resurrect him. So he said, you idiot, I'm winning. Simple as that. I'm going to win and that's it. I'm, I'm going to be the one who's going to save everybody. So he's taking a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. So that's just that as far as Vegito's concerned. Now, as far as Gokan, um, no. I, I think I would be okay with seeing it, right? Not because it's Gohan, but only because we kind of were supposed to see that back in Dragon Ball Z. So I would understand and accept that concept. And also, if you wanted to introduce 
a fusion that has that um that has Goku in it and make it last longer than Vegito. Have him fuse a Gohan. He's significantly weaker than Vegeta. The fusion should last longer and should give them enough time to actually get something done in the tournament. But I would say I don't want to see any of them. I'm done with fusion. I just want to see people kick ass, get the job done, and I want to see what this tournament has to offer personally. We also have to keep in mind that Universe 7 isn't the only universe here that is hinting at fusion or is interested in fusion. We understand that Universe 3 is also a universe that has some potential interest in having to combine like their fighters in terms of creating one sort of super robot that they can actually use to their advantage. And I wanted to get your thoughts on this bubbles and the idea that what is what is your overall take on the universe 3 robots and having to combine their powers and formulating this mecha machine that could possibly give them the edge because universe 3 so far hasn't done anything it hasn't done much and originally when i first saw this tournament you know be conceived i thought to myself universe 3 was going to be presented as a very uh tough universe to battle because their their specific fighters are being programmed for this kind of a fight and we saw that with Nariyama, we saw that with Nigirishi, but he got rung out too early. So what's your take on Moscow and the Hakaishin and gods of that universe having to order their fighters and combining their bodies? And if in fact we do get some sort of like a multi-fusion from that specific universe, where do you see them stand in terms of power? I mean, do you see them being stronger than Kefla? Do you see them being as strong as Kefla, beneath Kefla, weaker, stronger in terms of nature, um, because it'll be not just one fighter, but multiple fighters, if that, combining their bodies and combining their powers. So, aside from Universe 7 using Potara, Universe 3 doesn't have any need in doing that, so perhaps maybe they have alternative methods in trying to establish themselves differently. So, what's essentially your take on Universe 3? Because we know that Universe 2 can't fuse, their earrings are gone. Universe 6 is arguable because they already have one. Universe 4 with Catella has no interest. Universe 11 is self-explanatory with Jiren having to be there. So the only other universe left is going to be universe number uh, 3 and 7. So what's your take on universe 3? And do you believe that they would create some sort of a fighter that would give them a chance in this overall tournament setting? I think that since we haven't seen much from universe 3 so far, that maybe they will have a fusion because I do believe Amish said this just a little bit ago, but once you get a fusion, you're gonna expect them to have more screen time. And I think that since we haven't seen a lot from Universe 3 thus far, or as much as we have of, say, Universe 6 and 7, right. that for sure, if they get a fusion, everyone's gonna wanna know what's up with the new character, and that's definitely gonna bring a certain attraction to Universe 3 that's gonna make, make the fighters want to want to fight them and, and make them want to give screen time to these characters. So I definitely think for sure there could be, since since the idea of fusion has been so foreshadowed and, and is now, the idea of fusion is now something that is allowed and it's been openly stated it's allowed, that I think for sure the Universe 3, they have something planned and that could possibly be fusion and that would be exciting to see. I mean, would they be as strong as Kefla per se, in your opinion, especially multiple characters? Because I, I don't think so. I think that they may stand a better chance in surviving against somebody else. Um, but in terms of putting them on, on that kind of a tier, I, I read a few comments where people were suggesting that maybe with multiple with multiple characters, you might have a stronger uh, caliber like fusion, since it's not just two people, it's, it's more or less you know, three or four, depending on how many you're going to combine. Uh, what's your take on that? Like, e even if they were to do that, how strong do you believe this this Megazord-like fighter would be, uh, would he be relative to Kefla, weaker or stronger in your opinion? I don't think that the character would come quite as close to the strength of Kefla, or maybe even Goku himself, just because of the fact that even though the fusion takes the strength of the character and then multi- like of the two characters and multiplies it to some degree to make it stronger, there's gotta be some downsides to having that many characters fused together. For example, um, how for the Patara fusion, the power was the downfall, or also to an extent it could be the cockiness or the arrogant nature of the fusion that could be a downfall. So I think that, especially with so many different characters fused together, that there is going to be some sort of downfall if any, of, if any or if several of the robots from Universe 3 fuse. Because though we'll be able to get to see more of them and we'll get to see 
we'll get to see them fighting. I don't think that they'll quite compare to Kefla or even Goku in in Super Saiyan Blue form, just because of the fact that more characters in a fusion doesn't really mean that the fusion's going to get any stronger. It just definitely means that you're going to be losing these characters if the fusion is not at the at the level it's supposed to be. Amish, what's your take on Universe 3? Because I, I don't think that Universe 4 is going to do anything with fusion. Um, 6 is done, I think. Uh, Universe 11, self-explanatory. Universe 7, it's a little iffy on that, on that, you know, spectrum because they do have fi fighters that, you know, could potentially combine bodies. But what about Universe 3? What what's your take on Universe 3? Um, do you believe that the concept of this Megazord is really gonna happen? And if it does, where do you see they, like, where do you see them stand in terms of, like, uh, being presented as a viable threat? Uh, and just as a concept, do you agree or disagree with Universe 3 having to combine their fighters and creating one singular unit? See, that's the, that's the major difference. It's, this is not Potara Fusion, it's not Fusion, it's emerging, right? These are separate parts. These three fighters, they create their, on their own, they're three fighters, but they can consist and create one being, which is not that big of a deal. You have the legs, you have the midsection, you have the top piece. So right. that's, that's out the window as far as Potara and the concept of Fusion. They're more or less merging together to create one Megazord kind of warrior. So where do I see him standing in terms of strength? Well, I don't see him being Kefla level. I don't see him being Go Go um, Goku level. However, I do feel like they will at least give them a chance to make Universe 3 feel kind of relevant for a short amount of time. Maybe they're gonna they're gonna possess certain uh, techniques and abilities, like some kind of technique that allows them to like maybe similar to hit or something like that. Where if you merge all their powers together, they have like new abilities that allow them to, you know, kind of get some kind of an advantage in a fight. So, because Nariyama was actually programmed for the Tournament of Power, look what happened to him. So, essentially what you're doing is you're taking three characters like that, merging them into one to create one super robot that has like a bunch of hacks, but it's limited to a degree. When you're fighting characters like Kefla, or just Goku, for example, he could be the he could be the example. If you're fighting a character like Goku, then no, it's not going to work. Who could I see this person fighting? I could see this person fighting 17. Android versus robot. Makes total sense. Right. How do I see this person getting defeated? Well, if the robot becomes a hassle to deal with, not in terms of power, but in terms of skill set, techniques, and abilities, hacks, or advantages, the key is pepperoni. Destroy his staff or eliminate him, and then the robot shuts down, and then he's eliminated from the tournament, and then university gets erased. That's what I see happening. I do agree with it because it does make total sense, uh, but that's just how I would portray if I were to introduce this kind of a person or being a warrior to represent Universe 3. If I, if I was writing the show, that's how I would do it personally. I, I want to I wanna end things off with one final note, um, and that's the idea of Vegito. Um, again, this is possibly going to be the final time we're going to talk about him on this channel uh, in the tournament setting because we made two other videos before uh, specifying the likelihood of this happening, uh, and this was prior to us finding out about the Potaras being legal, but now they're legal. So now it just boils down to if, in fact, it's required for the characters to, you know, get them from the gods, and if the characters want to agree with each other and having to merge. So, by the very end, let's say for example, if all else fails, Jiren comes in with his unfathomable power, he comes in and he starts just destroying everybody, there's essentially nothing left for anybody else to do. Do you guys see uh, Vegito being the last line of defense for Universe 7 to survive? Um, even though we made a video talking about what if, Jiren battle against Vegito and how that situation would come about. Uh, I want to get I want to get Bubbles' take. Uh, what's your take on if Vegito, let's say, as a last resort were to be introduced, would he be a difference maker? Or by the very end, do you see the fight with him involving you know Jiren and, and, and outside characters having to be uh, a bit scrutinized in the idea that perhaps maybe Vegito can't get the job done and he loses? What's your take on that? And do you think that by the end? You know, it would be a difference maker, and do you think that Vegeta or Goku would even agree, after all else is said and done, you know, just to combine their powers for, for one single moment, just to take on this overly powerful character? Well, from all the times that we've had to resort to seeing Vegito as a character, uh, at least how I feel, he hasn't gotten the job done. So, I mean, honestly, to, to see him as a character as a last resort in the Tournament of Power, just based on how he's gone in the, in the previous times we've seen him fuse, I don't really think he's gonna get the job done and that he's really gonna make too much of a difference. And again, I feel like the only difference he'll honestly make is tiring out both Vegeta and Goku, which we know is something that is going to be completely way less beneficial if that happens. 
because when he was set against when he was set against Boo, he didn't go it didn't go well. And when he was set against Zamasu, uh, Merge Zamasu, that didn't go well either. He timed through the fusion both times. So honestly, I mean, it would be cool to finally get to see the screen time out of Vegito and the fighting out of Vegito that everyone has been looking for, and finally get to see what really Vegito can do now with the new powers of Goku and the established powers of Vegeta. So I think it would definitely be interesting to see it, uh, but I don't think it will be practical at all, and I don't think he will do much just based on his track record of not being able to defeat uh, the enemies or the character that he was up against in previous episodes. Amish, what's your take on Vegito? Do you think he would be a difference maker by the very end if they had no other choice or no other option? Or do you think this would in some way, shape, or form still possibly favor Jiren? If they have any intention of ever bringing Vegito back in a situation like this, they are clearly going to write Vegito to definitely give them an advantage to make a difference. That's yeah. one. Two, I'm also kind of questioning and kind of concerned as to whether or not they kind of realized that in the first time we saw Jiren in, in that episode 109, 110, the one hour special, yeah. did, they, did they remember or did they forget or did they intentionally have Jiren not go full power and do all the things he did while he was not even at full power? You know what I'm saying? Because now um, I think a lot of animes that have done this before, they've done it in Naruto with Madara. They've done it in many instances where um, you have one person who is sh who's doing so, so, so many crazy things not even at full power. And then when the heroes fight him at full power, he feels like not that much stronger than when you saw him before, right. when he was casually just bodying everybody, right? So I really hope that they continue to actually showcase Jiren um, if he goes full power, because one, it makes Goku surpassing him that much more relevant. You know what I'm saying? If that is the case, and Vegito comes in, I do see it making a difference, of course, because that's why they're bringing him in. They're not going to reintroduce Vegito into the series and then shit on him again, because essentially what you're doing is you're shitting on Goku and you're shitting on Vegeta again, and you're just shitting on the concept of Vegito, right? So the fans will be outraged. Nobody wants to see Fusion anymore. You're pretty much saying, guys, don't expect Fusion again. If, 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 the, if it's not evident now and you give us Vegito again and then he doesn't get the job done, once again, time limit. If, the t if, if a 23 minute episode, give or take, is one minute of terminative power time, right? And the five minutes of real world time, we got, we got Vegito in terms of on-screen action against Merzimasu, that translates to like 10 seconds of actual tournament of power time. So is Vegito gonna get the job done in 10 seconds? And if that's the case, you're basically giving us a shitty movie ending, right? Because what you're doing, for example, the first Broly movie, right? Broly's beating everybody up. Right. Everybody gives Goku his energy. 10 second fight, he one shots Broly, his heart explodes, that's it, game over. I understand that it was a movie, but same thing, Fusion Reborn, Gojira comes into the picture, pretty much one shots Janimba. That's expected, but to rush an ending like that, to just get rid of a character who is that wall, who needs to be surpassed, in that, in a, in that, su in that such short amount of time is a big problem. It really depends on how the fans view it ultimately, that's just my opinion. Um, so no, I just don't like the thought of seeing Vegito finish something since fusion never gets anything done generally and i think they ought to continue that trend use fusion characters as a means to sell product and merchandise and just be fluff characters i don't think they have a place in um the actual in something being relevant and something being done like the, the, like the deciding factor so that's just how i see it ultimately i don't want to see vegeto i'd be okay with goku us getting information about ui him more or less mastering and doing whatever god knows what and then him either a beating Jiren or something happens we'll, we'll see what happens i think when it's all said and done guys i don't think that we are going to see vegito in this specific arc i want to see vegito come back in dragon ball super i want to see vegito ultimately be redeemed for the lack of character development we saw during the fight with zamasu i want to see vegito eventually be presented as a last resort for goku and vegeta in using that kind of a method to combat whatever other opposition is, you know, faced in front of them. So I think that in this tournament, it's not likely for us to see that. If, of course, they do do that, it'll really shock the entire community. As for Android 35, as viable as that would be, I think that Android 18 is bound to get rung out at some given point, which ultimately executes the fusion in being a failure since one of the androids is rung out. And in terms of Gohan and Goku, I don't see that happening in this specific arc, nor do I think we will ever get the fusion of Gohan and Goku as cool as that would be 
I just don't see that happening. However, what's bound to happen is the eventual rematch between Jiren and Goku, the eventual confrontation between Vegeta and Jiren, and etc. So I do think that we are going to see lots of surprises to come as we do understand that this is going to go further into 2018 in terms of the arc ending. So post your comments down below, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. If you guys are new to this channel, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, guys. Turn on all notifications if you guys enjoyed. And if you guys love Dragon Ball, make sure to go ahead and slap a like down below. Check out Emish's channel down below alongside Bubbles' Twitter as well. I will leave links to their channels down below, guys. So make sure to go on ahead and show them some love. Thank you all so much for watching. And we'll be seeing you all down the comment section below. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace.